Hey, how you doing? Duff here. This is a little unusual timing for a uh, weekend ride video. It's actually Sunday afternoon, mid-Sunday afternoon, about quarter of three. Usually my ride is well done by now. Um, the Eagles don't play until 4.30 today, so I have a little extra time, and I spent this morning, uh, well, not, not the whole morning, but a good portion of the morning uh, on the tractor once again for the second day in a row, mowing grass. funny on my way home from work on Friday my dad called me just to check in about my health issues and stuff and um, I asked him he actually has his house on the market up in western Pennsylvania and um, it's funny it's all connected but one of the things we talked about is you know how every weekend I, I, I just feel I'm driven to just you know work and it feels like I, I need to get shit done always feeling the need to get shit done and and my dad gave me the advice that, you know, I should just relax first and then if stuff gets done, uh, it gets done. And uh, I joked with him and said I would try that, knowing uh, damn well I would not. So yesterday on Saturday I spent, let's see, 9 o'clock till 3 o'clock on the mower with like an hour out for lunch, something like that. So yeah, I was, I was on the mower all that time and I mowed all the regular stuff. And then I decided that I wanted to mow the areas of my property that I hardly ever mow, which is like along the fence line, along the one neighbor's property line. And uh, there's no, actually my lot, you've seen my lot, some people will see my lot. You know, I have a big fenced in backyard. But there's actually 100 feet that our property goes beyond that fence, and I never mow it. Uh, to be honest with you, I think the last time I mowed uh, all of that area was probably years ago. Uh, at least two, maybe three. So yeah, that's what I that's what I did for the majority of the day yesterday. Sat my ass in the tractor, and um, it, when you, mow, I mean, some of that grass was uh, upwards of three to four feet tall, and there was also like some woody, weedy things that I ran over. And when grass gets that tall, you can't just run over it with a tractor and have it be mowed down. It takes multiple passes, and sometimes it takes you going forward and then backwards over it at the same time. So. It took forever, even though it wasn't a huge space that I was mowing, it, it took forever to do it. So also, when you're mowing grass that's that tall, you just have incredible amounts of debris that come out from the mower deck. So in order to maximize my efficiency, I had the uh, the guard that normally, you know, like the little plastic guard that sits down over the chute of a mower deck, I had that propped open so as much stuff could get out of the deck as possible. And it works, it, it allows you to uh, mow faster, even though it wasn't fast at all. But the side effect is, is all that debris, especially on a windy day like it was yesterday, it just coats you. I mean, I was, I was like a corn dog of organic matter. I had grass and sand and dirt, like just like all over my, in my hair, my ears. Uh, yeah, it was a mess. Uh, it was, it was a mess. Oh, in case you're wondering what I'm riding today, there you go. I got my Meepo and I have my one wheel XR. And I also don't think I mentioned where I'm going. I'm actually going out to Ave Maria. I've never ridden either of these things, either of these um, vehicles out there. So we're going to see uh, what the people in Catholic Town think of the Meepo and one wheel. So, anyways, like I said, I spent all that time yesterday mowing. And then uh, this morning, I spent a good chunk of time mowing as well. I, I mowed the backyard, the part that's inside the fence. I did that this morning. So yeah, I'm pretty much mowed out. Uh, it's been a very mowing intensive weekend. Last night, I, uh, Cindy and I did go out to go see Venom, you know, the, the latest and greatest uh, superhero movie to hit the theaters. You know, I'm, I'm a fan of pretty much all superhero movies, even though some are better than others. Um, I thought Venom was, and I, I won't give any spoilers, but I thought Venom was a uh, it was good. It was entertaining. Um, I thought it, it, didn't, it didn't take a very serious spin on anything, let's put it that way. And, and the, the plot wasn't all that engaging. And you could definitely tell that it wasn't a 100% a Marvel movie. You know, it's it has Marvel branding, but you could tell it was not done by the people that do most Marvel movies. It just it just it was good, but it was not it was not up to Marvel comic book movie quality in my judgment. Had a lot of funny mo moments in it. Cindy and I both were laughing uh, quite a bit at, uh, at some of the dialogue between Venom and, and Tom Hardy, you know, because they are 
you know, technically two different beings, but uh, yeah, that, that's pretty funny. So um, I don't know that you, it's the kind of movie that necessarily benefits from seeing it in a theater. The special effects were really cool, um, but uh, I could have I could have probably rented the movie and been just as happy. Oh, also, I wanted to um, my last my last video I guess was last Sunday I believe, and I wanted to touch on the problems that Marty and I have been having with the live stream lately. The last two shows we've had issues with the audio. If you listen to them, you obviously can tell that the audio issues were rather annoying. So, and they really annoyed me so much so that Monday, the day after we did the live stream, I got online with Marty and I did some testing ahead of time to try to determine uh, what's going on and how to fix it. So the good news is, is after some testing, I believe that we do have the problem sorted out. Uh, and it, there, there were definitely configuration issues on my side. I knew that there was issues because I was using my webcam to capture the audio, which caused an echo on my side. Um, but we also discovered that the lapel mic that Marty's been using does not deliver optimal uh, audio. He actually had a headset and microphone like I do uh, sitting around that he hooked that up and we tried it with that and the sound was uh, definitively better with him using that. And I know he's not nuts about wearing a headset, but it definitely gave better sound quality. So I think that's what we're gonna be doing uh, from here on out. So when we do our next live stream next weekend, the sound should be much better. I have no further updates on my health situation. I'm just kind of going with the flow. Um, like I said, nothing definitive was, was really determined. At the gym, I can still tell a difference. Like for example, I did legs, lower body this week and uh, it really uh, sucked my energy levels down pretty quickly. But I'm just, I'm just dealing with it, you know. As long as it's not debilitating, as long as I can do my daily uh, routine, I'm just gonna go with it, you know, until it gets better or something uh, drastically gets worse. You know, because I, I really don't know what else to do at this point. I don't have a whole lot of time here. Hopefully I can get in somewhere around an hour of ride time. And like I said, I have both the Meepo and the one wheel with me, so I'd like to ride both of them, so. Let's see what we can do. It's funny, this week at work on Monday, we actually had uh, our offices were closed for an in-service day, where basically we uh, they, they secure a space in our entire organization, which is about 150 employees. Uh, we gather there and they do basically a day of like workshops and training of various sorts. And I was actually called upon, they asked me if I could do about 20, 25 minutes to do a, a cybersecurity presentation just basically to fill in our employees as far as best practices when uh, handling email, doing search engines, uh, just the various threats that you find out there in the wild, um, you know, just to benefit everybody. And I was, I was sort of nervous, not horribly nervous, but sort of nervous. And it's funny, I, I kind of told myself when I was doing it, you know, just to, just to imagine that I'm doing this, that I'm just, you know, doing my normal vlogging style videos that I do every week. And uh, I think that did help me somewhat with the presentation. I did misspeak a few times. You know, I, I often misspeak when I'm doing this, but the advantage is I can cut it out uh, processing the, the video, you know, when I'm doing the editing. So can't do that when you're talking live, but overall, um, I would say that it went okay. Not, not bad, I think I got my point across and the feedback that I got from most people was positive. So yeah, I've never, I never s s publicly spoke to 150 plus people before. So uh, yeah, that was that. Oh, I just realized I never finished my thought about my dad in our conversation. Um, like I mentioned, my dad's selling his house. And uh, you know, my dad, well, I should say I'm more like my dad as far as the tendency to give myself a big plate of responsibilities. You know, he is 70 years old, will be 71 this year. And he has a piece of property out in Marionville, uh, Western Pennsylvania, that's 16 acres, something like that. And that's maintained by uh, my stepmom and him. And uh, yeah, it's a lot of work. So not only does he have all that acreage, he has uh, 19 or 20 sheep and a llama as well that they care for. And if you've never, <clears throat> if you've never had a number of sheep or barnyard animals in general, um, you'll know that it is a lot of work, a whole lot of work. So anyways, like, like I said, my dad actually is considering selling the place and moving towards uh, eastern Pennsylvania where my uh, half-sister lives and her husband and she's she's uh, pregnant with their second child 
And I know my stepmom really, really wants to be closer to her for that reason, you know, just be around family, which is uh, totally understandable. And this whole, um, the whole impetus behind my dad agreeing to finally do this, because there's a long period of time where he basically said, no, I'm not leaving, I'm staying here until I die, more or less, um, was I guess he, he had uh, some eye surgery done during uh, late summer. And during that time, he stayed with my brother who lives in Eastern Pennsylvania. And my dad found that he actually enjoyed, you know, being around things where he lives is very remote. Everything is far away. Uh, not a lot of amenities, but you know, his friends are here and everything. He liked being able to visit his friends. He liked being able to have things close and convenient, uh, just hang out, not have all the responsibilities of maintaining the property. So that kind of opened his eyes. So anyways, you know, the, their property is for sale. But the caveat is, is he's willing to do this move, but he wants to do it with all of the animals. He wants to move the animals with him. And uh, again, my dad and I are very similar in terms of our attachment to animals. I can totally understand why he feels that way, that he, he doesn't want to abandon his animals. You know, he has a close relationship with them. But my basic point to him has been, you know, moving with the animals and, and I haven't been real vocal about it just kind of mentioned it in passing but the problem with moving with all those animals and that is uh, more or less all that work is going to move with you you know no matter where you go to find a place that's suitable to to um, have that many animals barnyard animals guess what it's going to be big it's going to require a lot of work and um, you know 70 years old it's just it's I don't know I, I, I just think it's it's going to be a no-win situation unfortunately so I'm not sure what's going to happen there. We'll see. You know, for my stepmom's sake and for my dad's sake, I, I hope that they can, you know, come up with a solution that works for both of them. Um, but I just, I, I mean, I can't imagine just doing what I do now in 20 years. You know, what I do now at 50, um, it, it wears me down. I can't imagine, you know, having to maintain that much uh, acreage and uh, the animals. And I mean, my, my dad has, I don't know, half a dozen outbuildings it's just crazy all the stuff that they have to do so yep we'll see what happens but anyways i i, I thought I, that's why i thought it was kind of funny dad giving me the advice to to not do so much work on the weekend and <laughs> and uh and just relax and and i guess it's different for him since he's retired you know he has all week to do this kind of stuff and i just have more or less two days but i don't know it's my struggle i'm sure a lot of you are like duff sh shut the f up already my god let's, let's get to writing I understand. I know where you're coming from, and I'll probably put a little in the description. I'll, I'll mention like where people can go to if they want to go right to the writing footage, you know, because some people don't really care what I have to say, and I don't blame them. <laughs> I don't know that I would care what I have to say either. So, but we are here. We are at Ave Maria, and I'm going to be taking the Meepo out first because I find sometimes when I get on the one wheel, I don't want to get off. So, we'll get the Meepo out first and uh, see where we can go. I think I did mention that I have the uh, Shredder trucks on order for the V2P. They have not arrived yet. I did get a ship notice, so that means uh, maybe within 10 days, or 10 days or so I'll get it. So yeah, no Shredder trucks yet. And we're rolling. I'm do some parking lot laps to uh, quickly refamiliarize myself. I haven't ridden the meatball in a little bit. I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the John Paul YT channel. John Paul YouTube, I guess. He's a guy that's uh, into Meepos. He has a, he had a Meepo version 2. And he just got the Meepo all-wheel drive GT not too long ago. And uh, he's done an interesting series on, on the GT. Almost makes me want to buy one. Haven't done it yet, but um, yeah. If you're interested in, in Meepo GT stuff, look up John Paul YT. Piece of Ave Maria, the uh, beautiful church. If 
see there, all the golf carts. There, there's tons and tons of golf carts in uh, Ave Maria because it's kind of a self-contained town. But uh, these people should get one wheels or electric unicycles or electric skateboards. A lot more fun. vehicles on the road so I can just kind of take this whole side of the road to myself. It's awesome. This is uh, top speed in uh, pro mode or expert. Number three, number three setting. Still haven't gotten our new mystery vehicle. Uh, like I mentioned it has been ordered. Uh, we did receive part of it but uh, yeah we do not have everything we need yet to use it so hopefully by the end of October. I'm hoping the Eagles uh, put on a better performance than last week during that loss to the Titans. The way they lost that game was super, super frustrating, man. I was feeling pissed off for a good couple days after that. I'm not quite sure, but I think the last time I was here was when we were here with Katie and Daniel and she wiped out on her M10-3. She got uh, speed wobbles, wiped out, gave herself tremendous uh, road rash on her uh, uh, rear end and I think the back of her leg. So yeah, it's been it's been quite a while since I've been out here. Here's a tip, someone told me and which I've come to discover is when you are doing turning on an electric skateboard, at least a hub motor version like this, you don't want to be accelerating or braking through the turn because it does not have a differential. So when you're going through turns, one wheel is spinning faster than the other. So that becomes a uh, problematic situation when you're applying throttle or braking going through a turn. So. If at all possible, you want to try to avoid that when you are turning your board. It's crossed over into North Park. There's a, there's a pathway that runs through here. And it's, I've done it on the electric unicycle many times. Never on the one wheel or the skateboard, so I'd like to try it and see how that works out. Seams on the sidewall are pretty close together, so you don't really feel them too badly. As you can see, I don't have my knee pads on today, and I have to admit, I feel a little bit naked without them, especially on the skateboard. So I'll just try to be extra careful. Take that back. There's, there's multiple little um, uh, speed bumps in the in the road here from roots going underneath of the uh, asphalt. So this isn't quite as good of a spot as I thought it might be. Okay. Basically, want to do this loop here and go back and get the one. Again. news. I heard from Jason that they're going to be doing another uh, wheel tour across the United States, similar to what was done with the Z10. This time it's going to be with the Kingsong 18XL. 
from what I can tell, the, the XL is very, very similar to my 18L, except it has a larger battery, like a 50% bigger battery, which is significant, and some bigger foot pedals. Those are the two things that stick out to me as far as differences. So that's cool. I mean, um, finally, Kingsong has an answer to uh, the Gotway high-end wheels. You know, it, they've matched the Gotway pretty similarly in power but not in battery up until this point. So now you'll be able to get similar range out of a King Song. So that's uh, that's pretty awesome. Glad to see them stepping up. And I'm looking forward to testing the wheel. I'm curious how much different it's gonna feel from my 18L. Obviously it's gonna be heavier. I'm not sure when I'm getting the wheel. Uh, it's going, I, th I think the schedule's pretty similar to before. Uh, it's gonna be going to New York City first and then down to me. Truck. I'm not really sure how far that was. I wasn't doing any sort of mileage tracking, but uh, seat of the pants, I guess, uh, I don't know, five miles maybe, something like that. And after that, I'm, I'm showing three battery bars of uh, battery life, so not bad. I'll tell you what, for 400 bucks, the Meepo V2P, it's kind of hard to beat as far as bang for your buck goes, really. Great deal. All right, so I just looked at the clock and it's a little after 3.30, so that means I should be able to get a solid uh, half hour ride time in on the one wheel, so that's good. Unlike the Meepo, I don't really feel like I need to warm up the one wheel. It just, it just becomes one with your body. turn a slightly different way. Explore some different areas of the town. A little bit windy right now. Uh, last weekend when I rode the one wheel I was in mission mode. I flipped it back to delirium today. Mixing it up. Some sort of back road behind uh, the athletic fields. I don't think I've ever been back this way, so see what's here. Got some crushed limestone. A little different. Whoa! Wow. I got a little aggressive with my carving and uh, didn't account for the surface possibly giving out on you. Looks like the uh, Ave Maria football team has a artificial turf field as well. It's funny, down in Florida, you would think, what do you need artificial turf for? It's like, you know, it's warm and nice all year round, but uh, I don't know. I guess in the big scheme of themes, uh, big scheme of things, it saves people money, I guess. It looks nice. And the, the name of the... Ave Maria sports teams here are the, let's see, how do you pronounce it? The Gyrenes, 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 G-Y-E-R-N-E-S. The Gyrenes, I'm not quite sure what they are. The logo makes it makes me think of, uh, that they're a dog of some sort, I guess. That's a Gyrene. So yeah, a very unique, Mascot name. Oh, you guys, <laughs> you guys might find this story interesting. I don't know. We're dumb. Probably dumb. So when I was talking about my, about my dad and how he plans to move with all of his barn animals and his love of animals, like I said, I have a very similar feeling about animals and most most living creatures. I I don't know. I kind of have a live and let live um, approach to things. Just ask Cindy about it. She's not a big fan of my approach sometimes. But um, along those lines, the entrance to my big shed has a roll-up garage door. And for probably a month and a half, if not two months, there's been a wasp nest in the top right corner. And uh, it's been getting bigger and bigger. 
So the average person would say, oh man, a wasp nest on this garage door. Gotta spray that thing, kill it, knock it down. You know, it's a safety hazard. And um, I didn't do that. Um, I've let the wasp nest alone and it's, it's grown. And every time I would open and close the door to the shed, nest is so close to that door that it would bump it and you know usually when it gets bumped you know the wasp would, would, would jump off the nest for a little bit but they would just circle the nest uh you know within like maybe a foot radius and go right back on they had no interest in attacking me so in my own mind i i meant that i i, I interpreted that to be that the wasp and i had a symbiosis they understood that i had to get in the shed and I understood that uh, that was their home and I was gonna let them be. So that's what I've done for a while. Like I said, it's a, it was a rather large nest at this point. I bet there was at least at least 20 wasps hanging on it. And it's, and it's gotten to the point where like Cindy didn't wanna go in the, into the shed. I, I would have to be the one to do it. But yeah, every time without fail, I would I would open and close the door. It might have bumped it, it would jostle the nest a little bit. And it would leave me alone. So it seems like, you know, the original creators of the nest, you know, those wasps and I had an understanding, but it seems like as wasps have been born out of that nest, the younger ones, uh, they didn't get the message, evidently. So yesterday, after I did all the mowing, I had to close the, close the garage door to the shed. So I close it and a bunch of wasps fly off and they are, you can tell when wasps are aggressive, they're looking for something. And they started flying towards me, I, I ducked down and uh, one of the wasps stung me right on the top of my head. And I'm like, ah, damn it. Now I gotta do something about it. So I didn't do anything right away. Like last night, I let it go. I, and uh, I actually, to be honest, I, I thought about it several times. Like, oh man, I, I, don't wanna, I don't wanna destroy their home. They put so much time into this, you know? But I can't have, have them stinging me, stinging, you know, Cindy. So, uh, you know, I just, I resolved myself. I gotta do something about it. So this morning what I wound up doing was I, I um, grabbed the hose that we used to clean up the chicken area, stretched it over there, and I just, I hit it with the hose to knock from a safe distance, to knock the nest down and just push it off to the side. I figured hitting it with the hose is a lot more humane than hitting him with a like wasp killer that instantly kills them. I figured maybe they have a chance to relocate, you know, rebuild their, their nest somewhere else. And uh, yeah, so no more wasp nest. And like I said, you probably think it's a dumb story and uh, Cindy could give you a lot more dumb stories when it comes to my compassion for uh, living creatures, which sometimes may not be justified, but uh, it's just the way I am. I'm not quite sure where I am. I'm just, I just kind of was following trails as I was talking, not really paying attention. So good thing about Ave Maria is it's not too hard to find, find your way back no matter where you go. All right, it's getting close to four. So I think I'm gonna start slowly making my way back to the truck nice to get out I was I mean I was um, considering not going out at all so I'm glad I at least got the time to go out you know at least get a little bit of enjoyment into my my work heavy weekend and I really need to find a way to just get three-day weekends all the time that's that's really the, the bottom line okay and right over there is uh, the Publix and the uh, church so Beautiful little path here, though, it's through the Maple Ridge area. This was Maple Ridge. One downside of riding this late in the day is uh, it's hot. It's really hot. It's really, really hot. perfect all right so there you go quick ride lots of lots of talking mixed in there sorry if you if uh, you're the type of uh, viewer that does not like all of the uh, the verbiage but you know once in a while um, 
I just uh, like to brain dump sometimes. It's helpful to me. It might not be helpful to you. Sometimes it's helpful to me. If you enjoy it, great. If not, that's what the fast forward button's for, I guess, right? So that's all I got for you for now. Till next time. Well, not till next time. It's very important to say. If you found this video interesting, please like and subscribe. Um, if you uh, want to give me your feedback on it, feel free to leave your comments below. Suggestions, ideas, thoughts. And uh, if this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing. I'm always looking for more subscribers. My uh, channel is uh, still showing good growth. You might remember a couple months ago, I just passed 4,000 uh, subscribers and I've added another 10% on top of that. So it's going well. It's going real well. I'm at, and I'm about to hit 3 million total channel views. 3 million. Um, actually, by the time this is posted, I might be there. So we'll see. So it's all happy for now. Hope you had a good weekend. Hope you have a good upcoming week. And until next time. Baby, hello.